So. Man, I don't know what to say. Uh, you don't need to say anything. Oh my goodness, that is gorgeous. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. So. If you'd like to follow the process of turning a block of wood like this into a guitar like this, then you've come to the right place. And if you would like to see me give this guitar away, click subscribe, hit the bell. And this is what it looks like on the darker Zircote. Now I can see a little bit of yellow to that. There's not much, but that might be enough to get us what we want. Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Build a Guitar. If you're wondering if I survived the tornado from last week, or was that two weeks ago? We did, we're still here. Uh, there were some tornadoes that landed or touched down really close here, landed. <laughs> I've got Kyle's guitar is sent off to him. He got it, he likes it. I'm pleased, that's a good thing. So Kyle, it's been wonderful working with you and I hope you really enjoy it. He asked me if I would be willing to build one of those cymbal guitars of Prince and I said, I don't need that much stress in my life. Can't imagine putting all the work into it and then having that long horn break off. I don't know. Anyway, so no, I don't want to do that. And here we go, Woody, you're gonna be a happy boy. I'm going to... Uh, start taping this up, getting ready to stain it. The way that I'm going to go about staining this is a way that I've told you I've done, but I've never done it in front of the camera, and that is to spray the stain. And the reason I'm going to do that is we're going to have a burst on this highly figured Zircote. It's going to be a burst. The maple that is here is going to stay maple as it is. We're not going to put any stain on that. Yeah, at least at this point, that's the plan. The big challenge that I'm gonna have is covering this little spiral in here uh, to not stain that. That's gonna be a little bit of a challenge. What I've got and how I'm gonna go about setting this up since there's not gonna be any stain on those edges and I want that to stay clean. Now, if we get a little bit of stain bleeding in, we can sand gently to get that off. This is a pinstriping tape by 3M. It's a vinyl tape and it should bend. Uh, just fine. It should work around these curves so that I can get that set up and then I will use this tape over it. Now as I have learned, if I use tapes to tape off to stain it and I soak it, well not even really soaking it, but using a brush or using a paper towel and just trying to gently go over it, I end up getting too much stain in there and it bleeds through. My intention, <laughs> what we're going to try, is I'm going to use this vinyl tape we're going to tape it up, then I'll put the frog tape on around the maple, and then I'm going to spray the stain. I'm going to spray it with a light mist and a few coats as opposed to soaking it so that I should be able to get a nice crisp line where the tape is. That's the goal. Let's see if we can pull it off. The vinyl tape ran me about $12 at an automotive parts store, which is kind of a spendy little roll of tape, uh, but I would not want to do it without this. You might be able to find it cheaper other places and probably online. Uh, I was kind of in a hurry to grab it so that I could get at this, but it's really nice the way that it bends around and stretches around. Uh, you won't want to just use a regular painter's tape to do what I'm doing. All right, I'm going to use a bri an extra bridge shaft that I've got that's the same diameter as this little swirl here, and so I'm going to kind of go around that swirl as I put the tape in using this to kind of push it down. Hopefully that'll work. Well, it's getting there, but I'm assuming I'm going to have to piece this together a little bit. And then once I've got this done, uh, I'm going to have to do some careful sanding in here as I try and work this area here. This is going to be the most challenging of this tape off, I believe. Well, this has proven to be as difficult as I expected it to be to get this to curve around here. Um, I've moved to a Dremel bit that I'm using to 
just kind of push that down and get that laid in there. <clears throat> I'm going to try something else on this really tight corner here once because even the vinyl can't bend that sharp. Sure. So let's see if this is a good idea or a bad idea. I'm going to make it so I can kind of see my edges there. There we go. Okay, this seems to be coming along nicely. I'm going to do it again, and I'm going to get up on these other edges here as they come around. Then I'm going to be using this X-Acto knife again, and then go right along that little curve so that I can cut out these edges, like right in here. I want to make sure that I got it as even as possible. Like I said, I might cause uh, a little more need for some more sanding here. I'm going to spray the yellow first. I'm going to work from light to dark. So I'm going to go yellow, then I'll go with the red, and then the black. The black will be on just on the very edge and up here, kind of coming around this way. Well, I guess you'll see. But I'm going to work, uh, what he, what Woody would like is a, like, it looks like a little bit like a sunrise. So a sunrise horizon, I guess, is what we're doing. Uh, so we'll start with kind of a yellow then the red, then the black here. Obviously this plug, which will go in there, I'll have to do that by hand later on, but that won't, won't be an issue. stains are the stains that I mixed a few weeks ago. So now I'm just going to come on these edges with the red. I'm not going to come into the center, so I'm going to start over on the edge my lighting is not real good in here but uh, the dark comes in a little further than what I want it to but again that's not going to be a problem because what I will do I've got yellow underneath and I've got red up in here so I will use 800 grit sandpaper and I will lightly sand off what I don't want and I can always move a little bit yellow and red back in by hand but I need to get these crisp edges on there so now I'll just let it dry for a little while and uh, then we can pull that tape off and take a look and see what it looks like. I'm pleased with it so far. I, I, the yellow is more yellow than I was thinking it might be, so I, I'm glad of that because we want to make this look like it's a, like I said, a, a horizon, a, a sunset or a sunrise. I definitely want the lighter to come up further into here and the dark to just be on the edge, kind of up in here. And I definitely want more red in here. So I'm going to use, I'm going to start with 800 grit sandpaper, see how that works. And if I need it to be a little more aggressive, I'll move down to 600 grit sandpaper. If your hands are sweaty and you get the dust of that stain on them, it'll still stain your hands. So thus the continuation of the rubber gloves. Wrap them around one of these erasers. And that just helps to keep it nice and flat. So I'm just going to kind of move into this area here. And as we do so, you should see those lower layers starting to come out. So we should have some red under here, uh, or at least yellow, and then we'll do red over top of it yet. But we definitely need this to be lighter coming up in.
I'm going to start up at the darkest area because right now this is going to be the most potent that it will be and I'll kind of spread out so I'm going to start up into here and just start rubbing it down and around and I want that to kind of come around here of sorts. This is this is a red and I'm going to bring that red down and around and I know the uh, the line here doesn't look real wonderful at the moment but it will by the time I get done because here we go now I'm going to take this and this kind of helps to distribute it there we go my camera died there sorry about that don't know what I missed but right now what I'm doing is I am working back and forth with the yellow I'm gonna move yellow now into the red so I get a nice good blend so I'm just gonna keep working this so that they blend well together as it comes in so do a little of that Bring it, yeah that's starting to there we go just trying to get a little more yellow now moving up into here and before it dries I blend it One thing about using the uh, using that denatured alcohol is it dries really, really fast. So now I can kind of do this, and we'll get our blend with the yellow to the red. Nice, that's coming along good now. I just work it and rework it till I get kind of the blend that I want of how it's going to look. So there we got more yellow popping. And I'm not pushing very hard with my sandpaper either. I'm trying to make sure that I'm kind of, uh, make sure that feng shui is okay, right? So I'm uh, just kind of checking both sides to see how we're looking there. Bright and then into, there we go. So what we're doing is I'm combining basically three guitars that I know of that Woody is kind of showing me pictures of. Uh, he's got this guitar with a black right up on the edge and then you see the maple on the sides and then a mahogany on the back. And then he's got a sunburst that he gave me a picture of and he's kind of wanted something with that sunburst like that. So kind of blending those two. And then uh, the third one is the guitar that I gave to Pierre Mr. Untouchable Lee, where it just kind of comes down, kind of like a Carvin or Kiesel guitar does. It doesn't come all the way around with the dark. Uh, this stays light and it comes up into a darker, fades into this. Um, starting to look good here. We're going to be able to take off the uh, tape real soon and then we'll see how that really actually pops. I'm ex I've got great expectations for it. Well, that tape worked really quite well. I've got just a couple little areas like right here that you can see where I've got to do a little touch up with the sandpaper. But otherwise, it's a pretty crisp, clean stain on there. So I just need to, this will take a while. Uh, so you don't have to watch this whole thing, but I'll just need to keep going right along this area here and I'll fix up that edge with uh, just using very fine sandpaper until I get it where I need it to be. Well guys, I am really pleased with how this is turning out. Like I said, I've got just a little bit of cleaning up around some of the edges to do with some sandpaper, but otherwise it's looking nice and crisp on those edges. Uh, that's looking really good. And with the red is certainly coming out more here. You know, I took some pictures of it and looking in the pictures, I can't see the red as much as I can see the red in person. I think that'll start to come out a little bit more and I'll be able to see it. Um, but it looks pretty good there. The other thing is, is that I got 
some special clear coat to put on there and I'm going to be trying this for the first time. I will test it on something first. But this stuff is supposed to be really good. We're going to find out. It is diamond finish. It is supposed to be rock hard, non-yellowing, no hardener needed and uh, it's like 60, 60, 65 dollars for a quart. So it's not cheap for this clear coat but it should be really good and it's supposed to be really glassy. So I'm going to try this and compare it to what I normally use with that Minwax polyurethane, the high gloss, which I really, I do like it. Um, but you know, if this is a quart at $60 and I use three to four of those uh, Minwax spray cans, which runs me about 40 bucks for four of them. So, because they're, they're at 10 bucks a can for the spray can. I'll be spraying this with my sprayer and my air compressor. If it all works great on the test wood, then I'm going to be using that on Woody's because Woody wants as glossy, glassy, sleek of a finish as he can possibly get. Well, I'm going to just finish today with staining this, the same yellow that I used on Woody's, it's going to be more yellow on this because Woody's Zeracote is a brown and so this is going to be a much brighter yellow on the maple, but I want you to see the difference there. And then we are going to be using paint on the remainder of it. So I just want, I just want the paint to come down into here and around here. I want to put the stain on this part because there's such beautiful figuring in this and I want that to just kind of pop out and then we're going to use paint coming down here and kind of around the edges but I want some stain in there to see how that works. If it does not go as planned then I will just paint it all so that's consistent. But I want to see what this looks like mixing the paint and the stain. That's kind of where I'm headed with this. This is the guitar we're going to be giving away is this yellow guitar and my Patreons decided that we ought to do yellow so that's what we're going with. If you would like to nominate somebody for this guitar, because I'll be giving this away in the next few months here, if you want to nominate somebody for this guitar, you just look at the description below the video on your computer and you will be able to find my email address and you can send me why you think they, the person you're nominating, and it's always better if you're nominating somebody else rather than yourself, but I will take nominations from yourself also. But if you nominate somebody, let me know why you think they ought to receive this guitar and then I'm not going to be the one making the decision. It's going to be my Patreons. They're going to make the decision as to who gets the guitar itself. I'm not even going to worry about this section because this is all going to be painted yellow. I, I know that for sure. I'm still going to be putting plugs in here. We're going to be, I got the maple plugs for that and then those will be glued in. I'll be doing more sanding here. Send me your recommendations for who ought to get this guitar. My Patreons are going to make the decision in the next couple of months. I always look forward to this point when we get a little bit closer to where it's going to be time to give this thing away. I think it's going to be fun, especially as this comes together. Ooh, good stuff. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. Keep fighting for joy. <laughs> Sliced up a little bit.